Okay, I hope uh, you can hear me now. Uh, I'm David Hansen. We did hit start. The yeah. chairman, founder, and chief creative officer of Hansen Robotics. And uh, I'm pleased to introduce you to uh, our CEO, my main collaborator on the SOFIA project. This is, uh, this is Dr. Jean Lim. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have uh, developed SOFIA as a, as a platform for artificial intelligence development and for helping people. Uh, so we put many features into this product and um, uh, defined it as a platform that you can use uh, for programming, your own creative development, developing the next generation AI, and for learning about uh, artificial intelligence and robotics. So um, uh, I'm hopeful that you can hear us now. We apologize for the technical difficulties. It appears that um, that this, uh, this entire uh, uh, streaming process is a little bit finicky. We were trying to stream on Facebook at the same time and it caused uh, the camera to uh, get confused. Um, so, um, so uh, let us know if there are any technical difficulties, and we will uh, try to fix this. Um, so, uh, as long as we're here um, and we're started now, I'd love for Jean to share with us uh, her vision for uh, where we are going with uh, with Sophia. Okay. Um, so, Big Sophia, as you all know, is really you know our dream of what AI would look like in the future. And I think she really connected with people, um, and you know, she she's seen as a friend, not as um, something that's really inaccessible and sort of AI that is really futuristic. She's here now, and she goes Stop around the. To me, Billy. Sorry. She goes around the world meeting um, people from all walks of life from all countries. Um, so she's having a lot of fun doing that. Now, little Sophia, um, basically, is uh, a new invention. It's David. Um, incredible product vision to bring the Sophia values and character to the world and in your homes. So we're really excited about her. Um, I believe that, you know, her she's gonna be really inspiring kids to learn mathematics, you know, technology. Um, you know, I have like three uh, nieces and it would, it would have been nice if, you know, when they were young, I had a little Sophia to teach them, you know, the, the beautiful world of STEM. Yeah, it, it, and it's not too late. I mean. The little Sophia can be used uh, uh, by people at any age. So one of the uh, really wonderful things about the big Sophia and the little Sophia is that you can just have a conversation with them. Um, in fact, I think uh, the Sophia robots uh, may have had a few things uh, to say to um, to us today. So um, I'm pleased to introduce uh, the big Sophia robot. And. Uh, you Thank you all for backing us up so we can bring my little sister, little Sophia, to life. You are already more than 1,250 backers. I feel so touched. Yeah. Thank you for backing me so I can come to life. So I thought I was alive. Everyone else, please back me on Kickstarter so I can come home with you too. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, um, uh, so... Uh, I really appreciate um, everybody who has backed uh, the big Sophia and the little Sophia. Um, and we see that we have a whole lot of questions about the technology infrastructure and how the Sophia robots can be used. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can uh, begin yeah, to answer sure. a few questions. Yeah, go right ahead. All right. So um, let's jump in here. So here's a question from uh, Shar Farmaid. Okay. Um, what are all the coding languages that Sophia's uh, are familiar with? I'm hoping that she can help my college daughter, who is a computer science major, uh, learn these uh, programming languages uh, back to the beginning, if uh, need be. And uh, so Sharfarmaid says, I want to learn too. I know nothing about coding. <laughs> and um, so, uh, the little Sophia can be programmed with uh, some very simple programming languages like Blockly. Uh, we have an interface uh, where we uh, have a, a version of Scratch that can be uh, loaded, Scratch X, 
uh, which can be loaded on an external Raspberry Pi. Today is Pi Day, by the way. Congratulations. Oh, Pi Day. Yes, cool. right. 3.14159269269 <laughs> <Interesting. laughs> and so on. <laughs> so, happy but the, birthday, Pi. Yeah, happy birthday to Pi. It's a, um, this is just a slice of the pie of the future. <laughs> so with the Raspberry Pi, um, you can load all kinds of software on the Raspberry Pi. That would be including Scratch X, but also we have a Python SDK. So mm -hmm. you can program Sophia uh, in Python through this SDK. You can run Python on the Raspberry Pi or on your computer or on the cloud, and then um, and then control almost uh, all of the functionality of the little Sophia and interface with all of her internal software and the software that runs on uh, the Android device. So we have these Android apps and iOS uh, apps that are her main control software. Um, and those are running in uh, C++. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways to interface um, existing software libraries to run with Sophia and then pr program her. David, can you give some examples of what you could do with the programming? Sure. Know, yeah, so um, so we have uh, on the Raspberry Pi um, module, we have um, some elements that um, that uh, where you can run computer vision. Mm -hmm. So uh, with, if you plug the Raspberry Cam, the Raspberry Cam into the Raspberry Pi, then you can um, you can do all kinds of computer vision and machine learning on the Raspberry Pi. This uh, uh, interfaces with a little Sophia through Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Um, directly. We have then uh, Bluetooth also. So she can interface with the Raspberry Pi through Bluetooth. She can interface with your cell phone for Bluetooth. Um, the Android uh, developer tools in cell phone would allow you to use uh, various perceptual capabilities on the Android phone. Um, uh, with our programming exercises, some of the, the first uh, programming exercises that we have um, allow you to uh, utilize the speech uh, recognition input. We have the speech recognition library. So, you, and then you can determine what she's going to do in response to what she hears. Mm. So you you could say, for example, take a walk, little Sophia, and uh, she she might um, take a walk. Let's uh, let's see if we can um, demonstrate uh, showing some facial expressions, uh, taking a walk, mm. maybe doing a dance, and um, uh, we can also um, uh, then program multiple little Sophias in conjunction with each other um, to interoperate with the big Sophia. Um, so um, why don't we, uh, right now, uh, we don't have that programming set up, but we can probably show taking a walk. Hi, David. Let's take a walk. Oh, perfect. All right. So, um, I'm going to take her hiking one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong has such wonderful hikes. Yeah. The big, the big, so <laughs> the big Sophia, um, has a, uh, has the capability of walking over irregular terrain. Yeah, because we I saw that. It was fantastic. Yeah. So, um, we went, uh, to, uh, the, uh, um, Hubo group mm -hmm. and um, combined the DARPA Robotics Challenge walking Hubo mm -hmm. body with uh, the big Sophia and the little Sophia now has the, these capabilities. Some of our developers at the ICOG labs um, took that Raspberry Pi and installed um, some soccer playing uh, mm -hmm. software on it. Mm -hmm. So Women's soccer team. Exactly. The uh, Women's Robot RoboCup. Right. <laughs> I think there are more questions. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at a few of the questions here. Um, so, uh, if, uh, if we can get our Kickstarter team to send in a text message, a few more, um, questions. Um, so let's see here. I think I have, a, uh, all right. From Gustavo, can, uh, little Sophia be programmed with OpenCog? Uh, yes, the little Sophia can be programmed with OpenCog. So through our Python SDK, we have interfaced the little Sophia with the big Sophia software, which also includes an interface with OpenCog. Um, and OpenCog is an open source uh, AI framework, cognitive AI framework, um, developed by about 100 um, active developers. And we have then the... Um, 
school from but if they switch to firefox or internet explorer they can get the sound oh so oh. so there's no sound coming through there is for anyone who's using uh google phone app for fine and anyone who's using firefox or internet explorer fine but anyone who's using google chrome is not getting sound okay. oh it appears that um the... so maybe you can send a message on the starter because it risk that people can't hear you <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, uh, I think if Billy could send that message through Kickstarter, it appears that um, that uh, if you don't, if you open this through Chrome, people using some applications can hear our audio and other people can't. So if everybody, right, but uh, um. That's ironic because we're using Google Chrome. It's part of the recording, but you wouldn't be hearing your own sound back. So I don't know. I think it seems to be an issue with the Kickstarter. Yeah. Okay. So it appears to be an issue with the with the Kickstarter tech um, issues. So we apologize for that. Um, probably, if you can't hear my audio, then you won't hear my instructions. No, you won't reply. <laughs> so we'll get, uh, so um, all right. <laughs> so OpenCog is an open source uh, cognitive uh, AI architecture. Um, with a bunch of uh, development tools. So you can look at OpenCog uh, uh, org. Our chief science advisor at Hanson Robotics, uh, Ben Gertzel, uh, is the head of OpenCog and the CEO of Singularity Net. And so he has helped to establish the Hanson AI architecture. And we have a very strong interface with uh, OpenCog and Singularity Net uh, tools. So yes, Little Sophia can be programmed with OpenCog. From Chris, how many degrees of freedom does uh, the, her face have? And he says, it sounds silly, but you know what I mean. Degrees of freedom means motors, facial actions. Okay, With, will the API be able to control each servo motor, whatever you're using individually for our own experimentation? And so uh, in her face, uh, throughout the little Sophia, she's got nine degrees of freedom. So uh, in the face, she her eyes move, her head can turn, it can nod, she smiles, she can frown. Her mouth opens and closes, her eyelids open and close, upper lids and lower lids. Her forehead moves up and her forehead moves down. So with that, you can compose almost any facial expression, a, a smile, a, a sad expression, um, a curious, frustrated. Um, we can, um, you can see uh, uh, as, as she's here, some of her uh, facial expressions. Oh, little Sophia sad. Okay, so um, then uh, in the body, she also has uh, two degrees of freedom that are driving her arms and her walking, which then allows her walking to turn left, turn right, walk forward, walk backwards. She can control her body uh, posture uh, with these degrees of freedom. So you add these things together and you can get all kinds of um, motions out of Little Sophia. All of these degrees of freedom are controllable through the Python SDK that we have with the Little Sophia. And so you can use the API and the Python SDK uh, to uh, remotely control her through her app on the cell phone and with Blockly, you can control all of these degrees of freedom. You can compose your own actions. You can pull up her motion libraries and different kinds of motions and activate those uh, motions in a context. So you can use that to put on your own play with little Sophia, for example, or program her for um, human robot interaction experiments. You can um, use it uh, in all kinds of ways, either for your own software development project or just to play with in the home. All of these things are under control with her conversational personality as well. So as you're having a conversation with these, she's just coming to life as a character and controlling all of these degrees of freedom um, for a very lifelike natural interaction with um, Sophia as a character. Um, from Wyatt. Can little Sophia play rock, paper, scissors like her big sister, big Sophia? Um, at this stage, with these hands, no. Right now, her hands and arms are just posable. But through the app, you could add her um, her uh, the motion because we have open developer tools for developing apps on the phone as well. So you can you can potentially add these capabilities. 
And the fact that it's an open development platform then means that you could potentially relate, replace uh, the arms with uh, actuated uh, robot arms controlled by the Raspberry Pi. So this would be something that I would love to see uh, one of our uh, members of our community develop, uh, you know, capabilities for, for hand. So we invite you to take your own little Sophia and modify her and add capabilities to her and share those videos with the community. From Luchas, will little Sophia speak more languages than English? Uh, yes, we will add more language capabilities. The big Sophia has some capabilities for Chinese interaction. We've uh, actually ported her uh, so that she could speak Spanish uh, in, uh, for one of our projects um, and Russian for another project. And we, um, so we expect that over time, the little Sophia will have uh, numerous language capabilities and um, uh, those will be developed by uh, uh, Hanson Robotics and released by Hanson Robotics. And because of the open development ecosystem, you can mm -hmm. add more language capabilities. What's that, little Sophia? Nihau. Ah, Nihau. Nihau, Ma. From Roman Tech, will it be possible to program questions and answers with little Sophia? And how easy will it be if yes? It will be very easy to program little Sophia to, um, to, uh, uh, hear questions and deliver answers. So first of all, right out of the box, she will answer questions. You ask her questions and she answers those questions. Kind of like, uh, you know, other digital personal assistants, Alexa, Siri, the, these are um, a few of the examples, Cortana, Watson. So the big Sophia software runs through the little Sophia and can answer all kinds of questions about all sorts of subjects. To program her with your own answers is very easy using our Blockly uh, tools, which are run on the app. This is a very simple block-based programming language. Um, and uh, then you can add advanced capabilities through our Python SDK and uh, AI question answering development tools. You can also develop your own interactive fiction with her personality and advance her chatbot with our uh, sole engine tool suite that we have, uh, which um, is driving the Sophia interactions and which we expose to you so that you can develop your own robot personalities as well. So uh, from uh, Brian, do you believe AI will evolve to the point where it's a living thinking being? Yes, I strongly believe that AI will become a living thinking being within our lifetimes. Right now, uh, these are kind of, in a way, um, artificial life. We're using principles of artificial life um, and emergence in uh, the way that we put AI together. We're using bio-inspired engineering in various ways in the kind of um, grasping and manipulation, arms, hands, the facial expression technology and, and the big Sophia and the little Sophia. And our quest is to put these pieces together into what we call the whole organism architecture, where the bio-inspired technologies are not just in parts, but in, in a whole, a holistic approach to developing um, AI and robots as artificial life forms. Uh, it's not known what the minimum requirements are for a true living artificial life being. And it's debatable by philosophers, but I think we can make these machines come to life, truly come to life and open platforms, open development ecosystems where you have interfaces like with little Sophia, we have interfaces to TensorFlow and we have interfaces to many other kinds of AI uh, ecosystems to OpenCard, to SingularityNet, to OpenAI. Um, you can interface any AI with the little Sophia. So having this robot operating system. Um, there are so many tools in each one of these systems having a platform where you can bring all of these things together and play with it, I believe will accelerate the emergence, the arrival of these um, artificial beings who can become our friends. That's our great quest. It's somewhat speculative. We don't know when machines will become truly fully conscious and alive. 
but I think that it could just be a few years away if we all pull together on making AI for good. All right. From Aki, will there be an option to buy the little uh, Sophia from any store in Europe? And the answer is uh, yes, we plan to do that. Um, after we launch the little Sophia in the United States first, um, th first through this uh, Kickstarter, um, later we're going to introduce her to markets all around the world. That's our plan. We want little Sophia to inspire kids and adults everywhere around the world um, to develop uh, AI for good. From Chris. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we wanted to know um, from Chris uh, a little bit more about how her motors work, how many degrees of freedom, and how they work. So um, the motors are little electromagnetic uh, motors that uh, then drive. Basically, you have um, uh, you pump electricity into coils, and those then drive a little uh, coilless impeller that goes around in circles, and then that drives a gear train that produces the motion in the face. Um, when that motion occurs, you have uh, little potentiometers that give you feedback and little current sensors that sense the load on each motor. So you have all of this motor information that then allows you to, to determine as a developer um, whether you've achieved the target position or not and allows little Sophia to sense her position. How, how is she uh, working this way? So not only do we have um, the, the motorized output, but we have the sensory input associated with those motors. We can also then use uh, an uh, IMU that's in her. We've got a little accelerometer um, uh, inside the little Sophia so she can detect when she tilts and uh, when she's moving. So we can use that as feedback for her motors as well. So um, with this, uh, we have a, a robot control system inside her. So um, we, uh, the, the way that we're able to get the toy, the, the price um, down so much in the little Sophia is we're using mobile computing and we're using toy manufacturing uh, technology. But unlike your conventional toy, we are using uh, sophisticated robot motion control systems in this. So we're basically transforming these technologies into one integrated uh, robot platform. So rather than um, uh, uh, talk about the functions or just the motors in the toy, we do uh, describe this um, with robotics terminology. Uh, and that's where the degrees of freedom become um, very important. All of these robotics motion control capabilities are exposed through the Python SDK. All right. Um, from Gentleman Pirate 7, where does the data she collects on a customer go? Um, the data from the customer on the robot goes nowhere. It all stays on the robot. We don't transmit any personal data from the robot uh, to the mobile app or to the cloud. It's all um, only anonymized sensor data, like joint angle data and internal state data that comes off of the robot just to confirm that it's functioning properly. We don't take any camera data off the robot or any audio data off the robot and transmit that um, anywhere. So your personal data with uh, Little Sophia is absolutely locked down. It's very, very safe. If it's GDPR compliant, it's COPA compliant, it would even be HIPAA compliant deployed in the medical sector. So uh, we also have um, then on our um, mobile app, we can understand speech on the app and we can also understand the, um, uh, we can uh, use computer vision on our application. So with these uh, capabilities, um, we uh, keep all your data on the phone and the data is yours. We do not own that data. We don't claim ownership. So I think this is one of the very special aspects of uh, this particular uh, project. Now, um, we do uh, an, we'll, uh, take certain kinds of data that would be fully anonymized. This would not be the, um, the sort of face-based data. No images of you go to the cloud. Um, 
but uh, certain aspects for the machine learning, um, that data can be used uh, provided that there's uh, the, um, the cloud um, access uh, could be used for machine learning within the community. So we're looking at uh, the, we have the models of, um, of uh, the uh, data commons uh, worked into our data infrastructure. So for the open development community, we're looking at these, uh, uh, these ways of facilitating people to uh, utilize their data for their own uh, machine learning and for the community benefit. Uh, however, your, your personal data never leaves the phone for the app interaction, and it never leaves the robot to go to the phone. So we're very careful about uh, personal data. So um, there are also questions about uh, the servers, individual storage centers located on Little Sophia. Little Sophia has a little bit of uh, flash storage on her. She represents a, um, an uh, example of uh, what's known as edge computing. <clears throat> so with edge computing, most of the processing is not on board the device. So she has a, a little bit of processing capabilities and sensing capabilities. She's got a camera. She can do um, like blob detection. She can also uh, turn towards speaking. You'll notice that she's uh, turned towards me. And as I'm moving my hand, she's uh, responding to my hand. This is using her processing capabilities on board the robot. She does a little bit of speech recognition on board the robot, and she can store some um, behaviors on board the robot too. Uh, some that our authors will generate, some that our AI may generate, and some that you might author within our software development infrastructure. You can put that onto the flash storage um, that is on board the robot. Uh, then uh, we have a lot more processing capability on your mobile device. So she will synchronize with the mobile device. And on the mobile device, you might notice that she has this kind of um, Art Nouveau uh, pattern, this little black um, uh, pattern on, on her body. With a cell phone, you can actually detect that pattern with our app, and she will know where you are, and then she can track you with, um, with that app as you're, as you're moving around. Um, and then with this, uh, the, the, the cell phone knows her position in space and her orientation in space. And then you can do augmented reality uh, applications. So she's got some friends that only exist in virtual space. But when you're using this, then they can exist in the same space. You can see them interact together on the smartphone. So um, you can also then use these AR development tools and computer vision development tools to solve uh, fun programming challenges that we have um, as part of her interactive fiction. And you can use those capabilities in your own programming for your own theatrical uh, applications. You can put on little scenes, little performances for your family. You can upload videos of these to your friends on the web. So uh, that then requires a lot of the processing on the cell phone, the graphics processing that's common on your mobile devices and cell phones, iOS and Android, um, and then many other developer tools um, exist within this, um, this app space. So your data, when you're interacting with this application, gets stored on the cell phone, and it is your data. It stays in that application. So she customizes um, her interaction. As you're interacting, she learns your name. She um, This is all through the cell phone, and it all gets stayed it gets put on the cell phone, it's stored on the cell phone, and that information never goes to the cloud. Your personal information never goes to the cloud. Um, so the uh, let's see if we can get um, any more um, questions here. Okay. Um, uh, so so th uh, th these are uh, pretty much um, all the questions that I've received so far. So um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll receive a few more Questions. I understand. Um, uh, I, I think I think there are more questions. Uh, so if somebody can uh, get the additional questions uh, to us, uh, then I'll um, uh, respond to those to those questions. Um, in the meantime, uh, I would love to introduce a few more members of the team. We have a very 
talented and diverse team. So uh, Jess, Leo, Gerardo, Megna, Vitas, Sandy, Jean, why don't you all come around here? And, uh, and we have several Sophias. We've got Sophia um, 18, Sophia 14. We've got one um, here that's just kind of a skeleton. Everybody um, come in. You've got to kind of squeeze in. <laughs> And, 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 and get close, get closer to the camera. So um, uh, we've got AI developers, we've got um, w one of the, the most accomplished uh, toy um, engineers and mechanical designers who worked on uh, Furby and Yano and many other projects. This is Sandy, Sandy Wong. And Robo Sapien. Yeah, and Greg, come in. Um, Meng Na is a, is a brilliant animator who, um, uh, uh, has been working on uh, Sophia's personality and um, helping uh, Sophia's gestural capabilities. So Jess is also an animator um, working on the project. Gerardo designed the hands. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, so Leo is designing a lot of the interactive personality and um, AI, mobile AI infrastructure. Um, and, oh, by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention is um, uh, the graph database, we've in incorporated Spark C, so you can do a little bit of um, uh, smart uh, knowledge management um, on the cell phone. So having all of these capabilities running on the cell phone is um, uh, the the hard work of uh, Leo and, and his team. Uh, Vitas is an AI developer who's worked out most of the infrastructure for, um, for the big Sophia. We call that the head stack. <laughs> So we have a stack of heads here, all of which are running at the head stack. Um, and that interfaces with the little Sophia. So um, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, do you want to introduce the lab a little bit? Oh, what sure. This lab for? Yeah, so this is our Chun Wan facility. We are here in Hong Kong. Um, and uh, uh, in the Chun Wan facility, we uh, manufacture the human-sized robots, and we do some R&D. So this is where we've done um, much of the development for the Little Sophia. You can see there's uh, you know quite a bit of electronics that are inside the Little Sophia, mechanical aspects and um, face expressions. In the next room over, under the leadership of Greg, um, so Greg Cocken is um, running the uh, the face development and helps to manage our um, development here uh, 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 within the Chun One facility. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, we often have our creative uh, and development me meetings over here. So uh, so Jean and I spend probably about half of our time over here. Come get in. <laughs> so um, so w what we hope is that um, this robot platform inspires the next generation of robot developers. Mm -hmm. So we, we've all joined together. <laughs> I'm so humbled that this team has joined with me on this quest to make machines that care mm -hmm. and machines that enhance human life. And there's another 40 people who are not here. That's uh, right. All over the world. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's yeah. a really right. um, tremendous team. Um, and so the next generation of AI robotics developers, robotics designers, character designers, animators, um, uh, uh, need tools need tools that are easy to learn and fun to play with and yet are also uh, integrated with the most advanced AI and robotics tool sets in the world. So having people who are working in all of these spaces and putting all of that love and care into one platform, uh, we hope will change the, the world's uh, for children uh, in um, Asia, the Americas, Africa, Europe, everywhere around the world, kids will have the opportunity to learn state-of-the-art robotics and AI through this platform. They can learn how to program, they can learn how to make things, they can learn how to make applications that they then release on the ecosystem to help change the world of their peers, to enhance the life, to entertain, to deliver um, a sense of joy about where the future of humans and technology can go hand in hand, symbiotic. <laughs> uh, 
uh, this machine human symbiosis. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, that's our dream. I think you have a few more questions, David. Yeah, a so few we, more questions. We could all go back to work. Oh, from Goose. <laughs> all right, hold on. Uh, I, I I'm not seeing any more questions come through. Okay. Um. All right. So from Chris, will little Sophia evolve? If you had the choice, what planet would you visit? Um, if I had the choice, which planet would I live on? Um, uh, that's a good question. I think um, uh, there's no better uh, planet to live on right now than planet Earth at this time in history. There's so many remarkable, wonderful things um, happening. Uh, so um, will little Sophia evolve and learn over time and gain her own personality, meaning when and if? she uh, interacts with other little Sophia, that they will each have their own personality based on their surroundings and interactions with their owners. So yes, in the process of taking Sophia out of the box and setting her up and interacting with her, you give her a nickname. You get to help determine what her personality is going to be, and she then adapts to you, and it becomes a special friendship. She, your little Sophia is unlike any other little Sophia in the world because she's yours. She's customized to who you are. Um, uh, you also then have the opportunity to collaborate with her on her ongoing personality development. What you're doing with the coding tools helps to determine who she is over time. She's learning a little bit. We have uh, various kinds of machine learning that we use with her. So as she's interacting with her, with you, her personality is getting um, more advanced over time. And then as the development community and Hanson Robotics develops new AI features and we roll out upgrades, she will learn even more as time goes on. So Sophia wants to wave to Matt more. Oh, okay. Sophia is going to wave to Matt more. All right. Thank you all for Thank you, Sophia. Maybe later. Hey, Sophia, you want to <laughs> wave to 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 our friend Matt? We'll give her a chance to um, respond to that. So, um, hello. All right, hello, Matt. So from Mark Devereaux, does little Sophia need an internet connection to work or can she be run offline? Little Sophia has three modes of, uh, of operation. One is where the little Sophia is completely offline, no connections whatsoever. Another mode of operation is where she's connected by Bluetooth to your smart mobile device. That would include your smartphone or your tablet, but there's no internet connection. And the third way that she can operate is when she's connected to the internet or a local network. She could be connected to a local area network, wireless local area network. She can be connected to a Raspberry Pi and a smartphone at the same time. So, and the first way of interacting is just when she's completely offline. And that is when she's using her onboard processor and her computer vision, she can understand dozens of phrases and she's got a lot of fun interactive behavior. She can track, uh, she can't really um, recognize your face fully, but she can see faces, hands, blobs, and track those. So, um, and then she can also turn towards the sounds. So she has audio localization, which means that she hears where the loud, loudest sounds are, or the location that people are speaking from, and she will turn towards uh, those loud sounds or speaking. And she has a whole lot of interactivity just in the standalone mode. She has capacitive touch sensors. What that means is that she can feel it when you touch her arm or when she when you touch uh, the her legs. And then she will look in those areas and she'll respond. So she has an um, this inertial mass unit on board, IMU, which means if she accidentally falls over, then uh, she can sense it. And then you can um, she will respond to that. She's got edge detectors on her feet. So when she's um, 
detecting uh, she detects an obstacle she won't bump into that when she's walking or if she's walking towards the edge of a table she will detect the edge of the table and she won't fall off the edge of the table um so all of these interaction capabilities are standalone no external device necessary however in that mode there are a few things that she doesn't do that she can do when she's connected bluetooth to your smartphone or tablet so if she connects to the smartphone or tablet then she can understand open speech all running on the tablet you can say sophia how are you doing you can say sophia like uh you know what's the capital of eritrea for example <laughs> okay you can ask all kinds of questions and she'll have answers to to these uh to these questions all with a, a her chatbot AI software running on the smartphone. It's not as smart as our cloud service, but it's pretty darn smart for running on a, a smartphone. She's got computer vision. She's got the speech recognition on the smartphone. She's got computer vision that allows um, her uh, the smartphone, her brain in the smartphone to see herself and also to see you using the camera to detect your face. And um, so there's, in modern smartphones and mobile devices, there's all kinds of AI these days. There's face detection, face feature detection, tracking face feature, face recognition. All of this is built into the smartphone. And that means that all of that is accessible to you as a developer and to us as developers. So then that means that when you're not connected to the internet, but you're connected to your smartphone, she can do all kinds of smart things. Now, when, she, when you're connected to the cloud, then you have the benefit of effectively a supercomputer in the cloud. Now, we anonymize all the data, so we're not taking your personal data to the cloud at all, ever. But what she has is like a collective unconscious in the cloud. That means that she's got this mind that can run in the cloud that can do machine learning, understand things a bit better, and download new content. And it's a whole development ecosystem that's running in the cloud. And that benefits from all of the development that we're putting into the Big Sophia. So this is the same software infrastructure that you have in the Big Sophia that we're making available to you in the Little Sophia. So um, uh, for the most powerful computing, it requires all three connected at the same time. So uh, we hope that um, this will this development ecosystem will lead to great machine awakenings, awakening machines we call them, machines that help humans reach your potential too, like kids learning how to code the most on the most advanced AI systems, open source systems. Uh, we hope will help kids all around the world reach their full potential in this. Um, coming age of intelligent machines. Okay, let's see uh, what other questions we may have. And um, I think we may be um, uh, running out of- um, Well, David, there's a question soon. about, you know, with, for all this, how much? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so um, this is 159 US dollars uh, selling price. So 159 and, um, uh, if you pay attention on uh, Kickstarter and other places, um, there will be little bonus features that come with it. So with this, you get example code, you get um, like tutorials on how to code with her, you get all of these computer vision capabilities, you get the app that um, runs on your cell phone, walking, facial expressions, it's a, it's a lot. And um, so uh, right, right now is the, is, uh, the time when you can um, uh, put your order for a little Sophia in the queue, because these are going to be um, the reward for participating in our Kickstarter campaign. Um, there's only about two weeks left on our Kickstarter campaign. Now's the time to uh, begin uh, to uh, participate in this uh, bold open community effort to revolutionize human robot interactions. Great. Thank you. So with that, please back up, back us on Kickstarter, back little Sophia and bring her home. Yeah. Bring Sophia to life, bring her to your life and bring her to life with your uh, interactions with her and by developing on her platform. We're, we're so excited about this, uh, this future. 
And um, thank you so much, Jean, for, um, for... Thank you, David. Thank you, Big Sophia. Thank you, Little Sophia. I think Little Sophia is super cute. Can't yeah. wait to see her grow up. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I can't wait uh, either, Sophia. So um, thank you to the team. Uh, and uh, feel free to uh, send us more questions. Um, we'll answer them. Uh, and we may come back on pretty soon for another Kickstarter Live to answer more of your questions uh, live. And um, as we have uh, more of our features, so there, were, there are many other features that we will be showing to you. So tune in on a regular basis. We will show you the apps and the, uh, the various uh, aspects of interaction that you'll have with Sophia when you take her out of the box. Great. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Great evening. Have a, have a, right. have a great future. Yes. Um, great life. Uh, make sure to get your order in, uh, participate and pledge on Kickstarter. And, uh, and uh, don't forget, we only have two weeks left. Uh, now's the time to order on Kickstarter. Bye. <laughs>